As of now, we discussed the concept of resistance and resistors. Now we're going to examine how to connect our resistors within electric circuits. And more specifically, we're going to discuss connecting our resistors in series with respect to one another. So when resistors are connected end to end, as shown in the following diagram, they are said to be connected in series with respect to one another. So resistor one has a resistance of R1, resistor 2 has a resistance of R2, and resistor 3 has a resistance given by R3. So this is our symbol for a resistor. Now our three resistors are essentially placed into an electric circuit which contains a battery, and a battery essentially creates an electric potential difference. And as a result of that electric potential difference between the two ends of our battery, electric charge will flow. So our positive electric charge will begin on the positive electrode, will travel in the following direction through the resistors and will end up at the negative electrode. So that basically means that the electric current will begin on the positive side, will flow in this direction through resistors and end up on the negative side because electric current is defined to be the flow of positive charge through our electric circuit. Now, notice that the electric current that flows into any resistor is equal to the electric current that flows out of that same resistor. And that's because we have the conservation of electric charge. Remember, our resistor doesn't actually consume or destroy any of that electric charge. It simply allows the passage of electric charge. So that means the electric current that goes into resistor 1 is equal to the electric current that comes out of that same resistor 1. So our I going through point A is equal to the I going through point B. And the same exact thing can be said about the I going through point C and through point D. So these I's are exactly the same and that implies that the electric current through each resistor connected in series with respect to one another is exactly the same. And that leads directly to the following three equations. So let's recall Ohm's law. Ohm's law basically states that the voltage across any resistor is equal to the product of the electric current through that resistor and the resistance of that device. So that basically means the voltage difference across resistor 1 is equal to V1 which is equal to I multiplied by R1. So this is our voltage difference across resistor 1. And the same exact thing can be said for resistor 2 and resistor 3. Now notice the I's are exactly the same because of the conservation of electric charge. These I's are exactly identical. Now let's notice the following important point. Notice an electric charge passing through each one of these resistors loses a quantity of electric energy given by the following equation. The change in our electric potential energy as the charge flows through a voltage difference is equal to the product of the quantity of charge and the voltage difference at that particular point in time. So, let's try to answer the following question. How much energy is lost by an electric charge Q that begins at point A and ends up at point D? So we want to calculate the change in energy as our charge Q flows through these three resistors. So let's begin with the following equation. So we know the total change in our electric potential energy given by U total is equal to the sum of the change in energy that our electric charge experiences as it goes 
through these three regions. So region 1 begins at point A and ends at point B. And the quantity of change in energy is given by UBA. Now this region is symbolized by UCB and this region is symbolized by UDC. Now what exactly is U total? Well U total from this equation is the quantity of charge Q multiplied by the total voltage difference between point A and point D. So let's symbolize that with V total. Now, notice our electric potential difference between point A and point D is simply equal to the voltage difference that exists across our battery. So later, we're going to replace V total with V because of that fact. So each one of these becomes the following. So for example, UBA is the product of, of our electric charge Q that travels from point A to point B. So Q multiplied by the voltage difference across this distance. So VBA plus QVCB plus QVDC. Now, notice the Q's appear in each one of these sides. So we can take them out of our equation and also notice that VBA is simply V1, VCB is simply V2, and VDC is simply V3. So we can replace each one of these with V1, V2, and V3. And we can replace our V total, the voltage difference between point A and point D, with simply our voltage across our battery given by V. And, and also notice our Q's up here in each one of these terms. We can take them out of our equation. We get this result. Now, we have a Q appearing on the left side of the equation and a Q appearing on the right side of our equation. So we can cancel these Q's out and we see that the total voltage between point A and D is equal to the sum of the voltages that exist across our resistor. So V1 plus V2 plus V3. Because V1 is equal to I multiplied by R1, V2 is equal to I multiplied by R2, and V3 is equal to I multiplied by R R3, we can essentially replace V1, V2, and V3 with the following result. So we see the total voltage is equal to the following three sums. So this is our equation for resistors when they're placed in series with respect to one another. Now, let's look at the following question. What is the resistance of a single equivalent resistor that would replace these three resistors that would essentially draw the same exact current as these three resistors. So let's begin with this equation. So our voltage is equal to the electric current multiplied by the equivalent resistance. So I is equal to I multiplied by REQ, where EQ stands for equivalent. And this is equal to this equation. So we see I multiplied by the resistance of that single resistor that would replace all these resistors is equal to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Now we can take the I's out and we get this result. Notice I appears on this side and this side. We can cancel them out and we see that our resistance of a single resistor that would replace all these resistors is given by this equation. We essentially take the sum of all the resistance. So we have R1 plus R2 plus R3 is equal to REQ. And this equation only works as long as our resistors are connected in series with respect to one another. So notice that this result essentially tells us the more resistors we have in series with respect to one another, the smaller our electric current is. So the greater our REQ is for the same exact voltage difference, the smaller our I is.